Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Who Invited Her. We are San Diego's LGBTQ pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Tony, and my other host is here. Hi, I'm Eric. Just Eric? Just Eric. <laughs> You're not Daddy Bear this week? I can be. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a very special guest today that I'm excited to talk about. Kaylee's here. You may know her from Instagram. It's AIDSBaby86 on Instagram. Um... I am so happy that you're here. You have such an interesting story, and I think it's important to share with our audience yeah. and just in general. Um, so, Kaylee, you're originally from San Diego, yes? I am. Born and raised. Yep. We're unicorns, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what part of San Diego did you grow up in? I grew up in, well, I was born in Hillcrest yeah. at Mercy, and then my family was in Rancho Penasquitos until the ninth until I was nine and the fourth grade, and then I moved to Adams Avenue, oh, like the Normal Heights yeah. area, and then grew up there for my formative years, and then I moved up to my dad's house when I was 16 in oh, Northern nice. California. So you've always been in San Diego? Yeah, my heart's always been in San Diego. I love San Diego. Yeah. Me too. Born and raised. I grew up actually South Bay, then went to high school at Grossmont out in the East County, and then, yeah, came out here. I moved away for a bit, but came back, so... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have the best Mexican food. Uh, <laughs> you know what's so Absolutely. weird? My brother, li my twin brother lives in New York. He moved out there for a job. And he's like, when he just came back, he's like, there is no Mexican food like San Diego Mexican food out yeah. there. I don't know how I'd survive. I know. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. I couldn't do it. She, what's your go-to Mexican place in yeah. San Diego? Let's be real. Like, yeah. are we, do we want tamales? Do we want tacos? Do we want, burri <laughs> like, what well, burritos, which is not Mexican. That's Middle Eastern. That's, like, fusion. So, right, like, yeah. just so people know that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's it's hard. It's, so like. Let's say, like, San Diego Baja. Like, like, taco shop Mexican. I know mine. Roberto's on university. Mm. That's. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Oh my god. Or a sit down restaurant. Oh my god. Ponce's. I love El Zarabe on mm. Adams. <sighs> like they're they're so good. And then yeah. I love Ranchos. Ranchos in North Park, the the vegetarian Mexican yeah. place. Ranchos uh, is amazing. And then I absolutely love El Camal. Oh come on. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, that's another really yeah. good one. Yeah, that's that's actually uh my 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 childhood friends family oh wow okay cool. so, yeah so delish. you you grew up in san diego but you were born let's let's talk about your story let's get into it yeah so you were born with hiv i was born in 1986 may 13th a beautiful tuesday morning <laughs> in san diego yeah. and yeah. yeah i had hiv but my family and nor i had no idea until i was seven years old so oh wow well, wow okay wow. yeah Okay. So how did how, wait? How did your how did your parents find out or your mom found find out? So I was in the second grade and I got called out of class to go to the principal's office. And I have two older brothers, and I have a brother that's a year and a half older, and then another one that's three and a half years older. Okay. And I instantly was thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to, like, rat out my brothers. Like, what do they do? Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Yeah. But it was this random lady who wanted to, you know, talk to me about my home life and take pictures of my bruises. And I thought she was so weird because I thought my bruises were great. Yeah. I wanted to kick it with my brothers and their friends. I was a tomboy. So, like, yeah. my bruises were, like badges of honor yeah. so it was like yeah i got this from like a ninja you're like role. i'm one of the boys yeah, yeah. <laughs> so even though i thought this lady was crazy for wanting to take a picture of it, i'm always like okay i'll show off and tell yeah. you a story yeah. like, Fi <laughs> finally somebody asked me about that <laughs> yeah, finally exactly. yeah so you can know how tough i am yeah like, you're like you. i'm one of the cool kids yeah. so yeah. I got the, the boys. So, absolutely <laughs> So on the way home, um, my brothers also saw this lady, and they didn't have these bruises. And, you know, I'm just along for the ride. I'm seven yeah. years old. Um, I am now doing, like, doctor's appointments, and I'm at San Diego Children's Hospital, and I, you know, do doing my own thing circling you know spoons and trees highlights magazines or like you know the highlights, yeah, highlights. Like, totally. highlights magazine all about those, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. i remember that, that was like my kid. pastime yeah, yeah. absolutely so, <laughs> so that that was me and um yeah. i was you know the 
monument you know this is like a, a week or so you know just like whatever i'm seven years old i'm along for that i don't really care like yeah. passing the highlights magazine yeah and a pen please yeah um but this one day i was getting a procedure done like and i was told to just like lay down and it's not gonna hurt and like i'm like cool whatever like yeah. i got my care bear and uh, they ended up taking bone marrow from my back, oh. which was oh. next wait like, at seven. Yeah, oh. it absolutely hurt. Oh. Like, yes. It totally, absolutely hurt, and um, that was a diagnostic test to see if I had leukemia, and I didn't have leukemia. I had oh. ITP, which is an opportunistic infection that happens to elderly people or someone who has colonates. Mm-hmm. So naturally i then i'm administered an hiv test and it comes back that i'm positive but like you know this is all like in yeah this is in the real oh. rear rear mirror but like after the procedure i ended up going to the movie theater and seeing cool runnings uh. which was like <laughs> this is that like, yeah like yeah. i was just like oh, what are, yeah that jamaican pops yeah. Yeah. Right. and i got my own like jumbo size soda and i didn't have to share with my brothers which was <laughs> so like i just felt like so cool that yeah. like i got this huge soda because i had to like i guess like drink a bunch of liquids after this procedure i don't know yeah yeah i don't know i was I, along for the ride like whatever like yeah. yeah interesting like so wait was your mom with you what did she um, think i think i was with my aunt yeah. when, oh, when okay. i went to see cool runnings i don't believe she was there but i was with my brothers and like yeah so they take friend, like, they I'm, take the blood the bone marrow test they do the hiv test when did they actually tell when did you find out that it was hiv yeah like i mean shortly thereafter like i mean still seven years old yeah. you know like life is still peppered extremely with um doctor's appointments like yeah. you know like yeah. after this procedure and i was at the uh City Deli. I don't know if you guys remember the City Deli. City which Deli is, yeah. in Hillcrest. Yeah. It, I used to love that, that place and go there with my siblings So all the time. special. Their tabletop jukebox. <laughs> like, give me the nickel so I can yes. get a song on, which is like my go-to uh, song was Ben E. King. Stand by me. Like, yes, it's so me. good. That yeah. face, that stand up yeah. face is so good. So for people in San Diego that are in Hillcrest, where the <laughs> hive is in oh. the heart of Hillcrest, that actually was City Delicatessen, which was like a diner. And they had such good food. And it was like an old school diner with a jukebox on your table. And it was diner food. It was, and they had the best desserts. <laughs> yeah. So I'm having my favorite dish which is the potato knish yep I like remember. i love the potato knish and, and it was a, the kitchen was kosher too yeah, yeah yeah and it they had pickles on the table pickles on the <laughs> table I like it's that. like tabletop jukebox and pickles on yes, the table it was great i used it was to love that so place. good and the best mustard yes. and my mom is starts to break down <laughs> cry snot bubble and she tells me that we have this bug in us called HIV. Oh, no. Wow. So you're at City Deli with your mom, and then that's when she breaks it to you? Did yeah. You under, did you know what it was at seven? As soon as I heard the word HIV, there was like a cascade of like events of like, oh, yeah, I saw this from the television, Magic Johnson, the kids from Blossom, Maya Balik, Joey oh, Lawrence, yeah. Yeah. and some extras were running around a basketball gymnasium. And they were saying some HIV facts, which, like, you know, retrospectively speaking, I had no idea what they were saying. Right. Mm-hmm. But the very end of the PSA was HIV can happen to you. And I was just like, oh, HIV, it can happen. It happened. Like, did you not see the commercial, Mom? Like, why are you, why are you sad? Like, I didn't get it. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, the yeah. television told us about this. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't. <laughs> like, right. I don't, wow. I don't really. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't you understand. didn't like, understand we, why yeah. she was so yeah, upset about it. And, yeah. and the innocence of being a child. Yeah. 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 It's just like, yeah, yeah. Like, did you not see the commercial? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, did you not watch the Now You Know with the star? How did you yeah, miss like, that? Like, <laughs> like, it's okay. Like, yeah. Benny King is playing Stand By Me. Yeah. Like, it's it's going to be okay. okay. Like, yeah. let's refill my um, egg cream soda did in Pass and Mustard. Egg please. cream soda. <laughs> Oh my god. I am so happy you remember City Delicatessen. Very few people remember that place. You know, it was a staple when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how did your mom get HIV? Did she know or what did she not until you till uh, 
You yeah, found it. Yeah, so my mom's story, I don't really know too much of it because my mom's her own person. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, shortly, you know, I'm, again, going on along for the ride. Uh, my whole family got tested. My two older brothers got tested. My dad, who my mom and dad divorced when I was three. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad's negative. My brothers are negative. It's just me and my mom. And oh. it's a 25% chance that there's a mother to child transmission through birth. Just so, yeah. like, that's if you're unaware or aware and choosing not to take medication, which, like, I'm not trying to be shameful of anyone, like, or, you know, it's like an access to care is a whole other aspect. Oh, you know, yeah, like, sure. Different sure. states, different yeah. counties, you know, with funding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and different countries, too. You yeah, know. different countries. Yeah. 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 Which is, yeah, like, I just feel grateful and blessed my whole entire life at like just born in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, my uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got completely <laughs> like know. taken away. So your just mom, blessed. Yeah. your mom, she did she know how she got it or she did? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Totally. So my mom was with this guy before my dad, like the exact opposite yeah. of my dad, and. He, I guess, had a motorcycle accident and had a blood transfusion and wow. was um, bisexual and also did drugs. Like, just, oh, like, okay. all of it. All of, yeah. Just, yeah. like, everything. And the most, when I say, like, everything, the most at-risk populations, yeah. you know, yeah. for, like, sharing and being. Because, yeah, again, I, like, I don't want to be shameful of, like, anyone, like, their, their life. Like, I, yeah. I want, I'm, like, so for clean needle exchanges, like and mental health services and i think everyone like it's human to have sex and be expressive and i think that people should be in like safe situations and be making safe you know choices for themselves always yeah, yeah. and so when your mom and, and also too that was in the late 80s early 90s so yeah. Yeah. hiv even the education on it wasn't where we are today in 2022 yeah. and the testing and then even the drugs and uh, everything yeah. wasn't available. It was still, I remember being in high school in the early nineties and it was still terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, even when I was like 18, 19 out of high school and it was the mid 1990s, it was still like terrifying. And there were people I knew that, like we're getting sick and stuff so yeah yeah i couldn't imagine being seven years old and then knowing you have this disease how did when did it dawn on you like oh i'm gonna have this the rest of my life and this is gonna be challenging or how did you view it as a as a kid i mean i think it was just always been like a building of it like i never thought like there was never like oh shit i'm gonna die ever um ever honestly like i've always had in my mind that i was going to be old and gray when i die um the the realization of why my mom was like snot bubble crying like you know like her own like guilt and shame of the whole aspect of like her wishing that she didn't give it to me you know like all that like you know was later learned but when i was seven years old my mom you know scrambling to you know get me in care there's azt and anabolic steroids which is like Mm. another scary thing it's like to have something you know affect you and your health and have no you know compass on what that even means or like what the outcome is and there's like no answers and people don't know like yeah you know it's it's understandably terrifying but then again like you know i'm seven years old and i'm just like i got this yeah like i remember like i saw a doctor and they were talking about my health and i was telling them i'm like oh i live I love vegetables. Like, I got this. Like, don't worry about it. And <laughs> You're I like, remember, I'm fine. Like, what are you all I mean, whining about? I'm Yeah, good. like, I, I remember, like, and even seeing, like, I didn't, you know, I'm seven, but yeah, like, the memory of seeing this doctor's face of just like, oh my God, you're so cute. But like, no, like, but I was just oh, like, the like, innocence just, like, of seven. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, when I did think, that, when did that mindset change for you? So the drugs of anabolic steroids and AZT wasn't enough for my mom. And yeah. she was able to get in contact with the Elizabeth Glacier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. Okay. And they got me in a study at NIH for the first cocktail therapy oh, drugs wow. okay. for children wow. so i was on azt 3tc and ddi and i was going back and forth from san diego like i was like a bicoastal child for two years on the study and 
um, across the street from NIH, there's like a Ronald McDonald style house for yeah. the families of the children that are participants in the studies. They need to be at a place to stay. And um, it's called the Children's End. It's beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. Like, resilience of life and just people there, yeah. the people, like, the friends that I've met. But, you know, I'm a sick kid. I'm just, like, in it. Like, you know, again, yeah. on for the ride. Like, this is what, <laughs> this is my life. Like, yeah. And, um, I'm hanging out with my friends, like, you know, they have, like, cancers and stuff, like, whatever. <laughs> like you know, Everybody like, had, just... like, their badge, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> we're just kids hanging out, like, we just want to yeah. play, like, yeah. you know, pass me the Nintendo, like, controller, please, like, yeah. kick it, like, yeah. and there's the parents over, you know, yonder in the corner, you know, sad and, like, understandably, like, tired and hurt yeah. from, like, the journey of all of this and yeah. e talking about how awful their community has been towards them like whether it be their loved ones and like them being scared like here's your own separate dish and let me run around with like bleach and a spray bottle to make sure i'm like spraying everything down before yeah. you like after you and like even though i'm playing with my friends like my ears are open and i'm hearing all like hearing all these stories of like people just completely being shunned, not allowed into camps, not like, yeah, like within yeah. their communities. And like, it's 1993, it's 1994. And I'm just like, shit, man, like, I'm a child. Like, these are my friends. Like, mm -hmm. people can act like that. Like, I don't yeah. know, when you're sick and you, you are in need of like love and care, not someone to shun you and not give you that. Like, I don't, like, it was just such a, a mind fuck for me like like what like people can act like that i don't want to be around people like that and i understand why we are keeping my status in like to ourselves like yeah. within my nuclear family like yeah. my community yeah. had no idea about our family and, and it was such a di and it was such a different time back then because i remember also see remember the tv show i think it was called um sisters or something like that and they had entered and it was this group of women colored women who um were roommates or friends or something if i remember i can't remember the name of sitcom but i re i distinctly remember this episode where they introduced one of the characters um friends comes over to their apartment for dinner and she's hiv positive mm -hmm. and she uses a knife to cook dinner and the other all the lady who the character that is hosting the party was very like i don't want her in my house and da 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 and her yeah her friends are like you're overreacting you can't and they start educating like the audience like you can't get it this way this way this way and i remember at the end of the episode the the knife that the hiv positive character was using was sitting in the dishwasher to get to get washed and the character looks at it and she walks over grabs it with a with a napkin and throws it in the trash Whoa. and i remember that stuck with me for like the longest time and as a gay young man i remember going oh shit if i ever get hiv yeah. this is how people are going to treat me so i cannot imagine starting yeah. that feeling that at seven starting at seven going forward yeah. for you it must have been so challenging as even a teenager in those awkward years you it know was, what i mean it was majorly awkward it was majorly how awkward. did you like, navigate that i mean like i just feel blessed because i had like you know two older brothers that were like very close in age where yeah. i could like you know placate of like oh like be scared of my brothers like you know like they're all up in my shit like yeah. you know like in uh, I was just a wallflower. I didn't want people in my shit because I like needed no basis. Like you know, mm -hmm, everyone's sure. in everyone's business. Like I didn't want a boyfriend. I didn't want a date. And like hearing these comments about like you know in the schoolyard, like just super ignorant, naive, yeah, things, which is like understandable. But like I can't even stick up for myself. I can't even say anything. Um, like, I, I lived in two different worlds. Like, I had this, like, educated world of, like, you know, specialists and doctors and people mm -hmm. that accepted me, and I knew that was out there. And then I also had this, like, structured world of, like, school, which I knew there was an ending point for that, which is when I graduated. And I didn't – I could be in control of who I was around, and I thought that, you know, was empowering for me. Like, this is indentured servitude. I don't have to – once I graduate – I don't have to see these people at all anymore. Like yeah. I can't control yeah. this 
eight hours of day. And I, I, you know, I, it, I didn't want people to give me pity about my status. I didn't want people to hate on me. I just didn't want people in my shit. So it's like, I knew that was going to be an end. And like, I could control, like once I become 18 and an adult, like I can be in control of these aspects. And if they didn't like me, like, you know, like kick rocks, you know, like I don't want you around my life anyways. Like I don't have to see you. I can control that. That is so mature. I, I I think back of myself in the, that age period, and I never <laughs> looked at. I, I don't think I could right. even process life that way. No, me neither. I wasn't mature enough to even think that way. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I tell people. I tell people I have a um, a, a enlarged frontal lobe. Yeah. You know, like I'm just like a, a total thinker, and I. Yeah was taken out of, you know, school and stuff, and I had doctor's appointments, and there was so much waiting time and traveling where, like, I am thinking, and, you know, I'm expanding my mind, and, like, mm-hmm. and thinking about aging, death, and dying. But, like, at the same time, like... How do you handle the thoughts of, you know you have this disease at a very... You don't know any different. Do you know what I mean? You don't know a life really without it. So how, especially going through the teenage years... Dealing with the thought of, I'm going to get sick one day, possibly, and I'm going to die. Like, especially back in the late 80s, early 90s, when the education and the, I guess you could say, everything we know about HIV now wasn't like that back then. How did you navigate those thoughts without going crazy? Well, that's that's the whole thing. Is like, I don't, it's mind-boggling. I, I don't know if I could do it. Like, I, to me, um, I've been blessed to be around a lot of amazing doctors and i'm aware of like consent and my doctors they're they're a team like we're we're together we're in this together and i feel empowered to be around them like i know like i love them and like it's a conversation like we're having this together and i know like especially in the beginning like they didn't know anything like i don't know anything like i'm just gonna gaslight myself like like how do you know that i'm gonna die like how do you know this outcome like you don't yeah. know you don't yeah. know anything like you yeah. don't know anything i don't know anything and i don't like that like <laughs> attitude like so i'm not I... gonna accept it like it's a <sighs> mind virus you know these are the yeah. things like these like you know stigmas and these ways of acting you know like miseducation it's like who told you that like you know like why i say i have told friends before like you know jokingly that i positively gaslight myself you know it's just <laughs> yeah. like people they don't know the end and like it's open-ended and that's okay but like why would you choose the most negative or like awful outcome how about we'll go with the best and try for the best like see i think (laughs) that is amazing not just in your situation but in life in In general Yeah. yeah because a lot of people especially when we talk about mental health you automatically i know i did the same when i went through cancer i was like i'm gonna die this is it instead of and i wish looking back i'm like why didn't I do like how you did, <laughs> Kaylee? Like, oh, you know what? That's the worst case scenario. Why am I focused on that when I could be like, you know what? I'm gonna be fine, and that's the focus you put it on. Yeah, I, I mean that is so true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was so like, like pumped, to, yeah. you know, to get out of like my childhood. You know, mm-hmm. like I like was like this. I like wanted I want to, const- to be done. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to construct my life. I didn't want to be around these like possible these, you know, other these other people that yeah. are developing and also trying and like possibly lashing out and projecting their own awful things. Like I don't want to be a part of it. Like tapping out like <laughs> i'm gonna wait till i'm gonna wait till I'm like 18. i'm good you yeah, guys like, you guys tap me back in at 18 exactly. <laughs> and i have wow. more control of what my life is gonna be <laughs> totally absolutely yeah. and um so like with so my my childhood you know was peppered with you know so much doctors and yeah. specialists and after the first study i got transferred into the second cocktail therapy for children which was the podrace inhibitors and these were now pills so i had control over taking these 12 pills three times a day and they would melt in my mouth Mm. so they're melting in my mouth and they're making me feel like shit which is like another aspect of like being mind fucked as a you know child of like wow people act like this is a you know, a professional, you know, this authority, this doctor, this specialist, the high, the, you know, the, the highest, yeah. uh, like, person that knows what's up is telling you, <coughs> telling me 
I'm sick and I need to take this to make me feel better. And I take it and I'm throwing up. Like, it I don't makes, feel better. Like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this is like, yeah, like, I'm not, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you're really messing. Like, this doesn't, like, my body is literally rejecting it. Like, my body is saying yeah. no to this. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> were you like, that doctor doesn't know anything? Is that did it make you question that and feel? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely, you know, enriched my uh, beliefs of like, yeah, doctors is trying and also consent to like, you know, these are like new drugs, and yeah. I've always heard like in five years we're gonna have a we're gonna have a the cure in five years, five yeah. years, and five years, five years we'll have a cure. Oh wow! Like it's like that's been the rhetoric since nineteen ninety four. We'll, yeah, we'll add an extra year in five years. Which, like, hell yeah, like, I love it. And there has been absolute evolution. But, like, and especially with in my own self. But, like, I think, like, drugs are such a, a personal thing to people. Like, it's like diets. Like, people respond to things differently. Oh, and, yeah. Like, it's so true. I think it's so yeah. crazy that people say, like, this works for me. It's going to work for you. Yeah. Like Everybody's different. And what may work for you is not going to work for somebody so else. So true. You know yeah, what I mean? like, and don't make people feel bad. Like, you know, that's, like, try. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, like, everyone's <laughs> just trying, you know? Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, school. How, um, I have a question. How, how is your relationship with your brothers? Like, how did they respond to knowing that you were HIV positive? Did they go into protective mode or did they get scared or how did they process it? I, I think a, a little bit of both. I have one interview with my brother on my IG page, like, which, um, on the eve of, like, I, I started my IG page, like, like less than two years ago. But, like, within that, like, I'm, like, ri like visiting and hitting topics that I never necessarily asked before. Like, I, I talked to my dad and asked my dad about what it was like with me. And then I also asked, so my brother. So I'm asking my brother, like, what it was like to be him and learning about me being positive. And what, what was that, like... Yeah. All of all that for how old were your brothers when when they found out? How how much older are they than you? Are you the baby? I'm the baby. Yeah, yeah I'm the youngest. So how old are they? And how old were they at the time? So my brother Nick, who is um featured a couple times on my yeah. IG page, is a year and a half older than me. So I was seven, he was eight and a half. Okay. And then my other brother, uh Troy, is three and a half years older than me and so he was ten and a half. Oh, so they were young too. Were young. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of all had a. I'm sure they went through their own journey, knowing like their sister was positive and she was sick, and how I'm. J that must have been totally. all of you and, guys and, like, keeping were, like, this hush, hush, like yeah, yeah. like keeping yeah. The, keeping and the wanting to protect down. you. Did it make yeah. Did it make your relationship with your brother stronger? Or I think how with did one it, of them, yeah. Like with the other, with the eldest one, I'm not really sure. Like yeah. I think. I'm, yeah, I can't. I can't really speak for him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But, and your yeah. mom? Do you do you talk to your mom still, or how is the relationship with your mom? Did you have any anger towards her? I'm sure people are wondering. Yeah. That. So I never had anger towards my mom. My mom's always been like, I say my mom's a special person. Mm -hmm. Like people are like, what do you mean? Like your mom's a special person? It's like the the words and the understanding. Like it's like I feel like. I used to feel a lot of um, pity towards my mom. Yeah. And it's like pity is not a really good way to operate at all. Mm -hmm. And I understand my mom's like her, but I'm not in charge of my mom and I can't help my mom. Like I've never blamed my mom. Like my mom has always been like unfortunate, uh, a letdown. The bar has been so low for my mom and she can't reach that. And that's okay. It's yeah. okay. Like I don't hate her for at all for not reaching that bar. It's it's unacceptable for me to even have a bar up because it's it's not okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's it's yeah. only for my you know, and like, you know, bless bless her. I hope her all as well. But like I, I don't have a relationship with her currently. Um my mom, yeah, has always been that has always been that like even since i was little yeah. like she has been like a reflection like a sociology like you know oh, like okay. field experiment like yeah. look, at this, look at this person in the world <laughs> like how she treats people is very very interesting and, and and an abnormal psychology but 
I give her so much love and gratitude for her because without her, she wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. Like I wouldn't no. be born and have yeah. strong Buddhist philosophy that I pick, you pick your parents. And yeah. like, I love my AIDS. I love all my experiences. Like I love, I never blame my mom for being HIV positive. Like I do not want to be around her. I doubt like she drives me crazy. <laughs> the sound of her voice, sure. like, but like you know, like yeah, totally I don't. I that. also think that I also bring a level of guilt and shame to her just by being around her. Oh, uh, I never thought of it that yeah, way. That like, yeah, like I've true. always been such a such an aspect of guilt and shame for my mother. So maybe I am like, a mistake for her, yeah. life, and then she has to deal with me and she has to take me to all these things and i had meningitis four times in two years holy shit are you wow. kidding me? yeah so 16 so when i was 16 years old i moved up to my dad's house in northern california and i developed meningitis fungal meningitis cryptococcal meningitis yeah. which is very rare like very very rare and it's getting it four times in two years you know it is that the reflection of how hard it is for your body to get rid of it and yeah. like it's very deadly and it's almost unheard of for someone to live with it going through it once like the medication that they give to people that have cryptococcal meningitis is called anthotericin and doctors call it anthoterrible oh. like, oh my God. like wow. it, so it depletes your body of uh, potassium yeah so, like, potassium is vital for all your functions of your heart. Yeah. For your heart, for all your muscles. And muscles, your, yeah. Yeah, and your heart's a muscle. And, like, it just needs, like, a little bit. And, like, I and was... you were 16? Teen. When, yeah. yeah, I had it oh, four times, 16 to 18. Do your muscles just start spasming without potassium? Isn't that, like, a... That's a problem I anyways, right? I can imagine right? Yeah. going through it all is. of that as a teenager at 16. I didn't yeah. even, like... I, I can imagine processing that. So the amount of, of gratitude and blessings I have Damn. for my body and yeah. like just like the awareness, like there's so many like analogous that I have for my life. Like I, I love my AIDS. Like I love my life. There's nothing that I would ever, ever take back. But the second time I had meningitis and got better, I was out with some girlfriends and I had some leg cramps and I never had, ha never, ever have leg cramps. Yeah. I'm yeah. from San Diego. You guys know the streets. They're broken up. I used to ro <laughs> rollerblade these streets. Like yeah. I, yeah. I have all all of the balance like yeah. in the world, and I never get cramps. And I had these cramps in my shins, and I was like, "This is very strange. I couldn't do anything excessive." And my go-to answer to things is to take a nap. Yeah, I'll wake up in a better time in a better place. Mm. Like you know, I, it's an attitude I adjustment. Totally agree with like, that. Like, <laughs> you know, like true. sometimes a nap can change your yeah, mood for the day. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like like things are just like overwhelming. Yeah. And it's like you can't control that, but you can control yourself. And how about you just take yourself out of it, take a little yeah. nap, take a little like meditation, like yeah. get out of yeah. it, like you know, put your set yourself up for for success. Yeah. <sighs> That is, yeah. So then you got it a second time. How, so two years. Oh, wait, you no, were... no, I have to tell you about the, the potassium thing. Oh, almost go ahead, almost go ahead. Done. So like, yeah, so these cramps will go away. So, cause this yeah. is crazy. The cramps will go away and I end up uh, not being able to walk. <gasps> and I go, my girlfriend's, yeah, not being able to walk. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm, I'm terrified. I have no idea what the fuck is going on with me. And I'm very in tune to my body. And yeah. I'm like, I have no answers. Yeah. Like, and I can usually keep myself calm. Like, we've, We've been through a lot. Like I, I love this thing. Like yeah. this is how my soul gets around this yeah. plane of existence. Like, uh, yeah. So I, I'm like at the UC Davis Hospital, and I don't have a cell phone, and I'm sorry, babe. I'm like throwing my arm at the the payphone because I couldn't. I didn't have enough muscle control. Like, I didn't know what was to happening, dial? but, I, you know, like, I had to dial my dad's Holy phone number shit. to come get me. Whoa. Yeah. And, like, it was because Ampo ter Terrible kept, like, since it depletes your potassium, your body is so good at getting, like, set points in homeostasis. That was my body's normal, was to get rid of the potassium. Wow. Like, my body didn't, like, get, like, you know, get catch on. Like, yeah. Didn't yeah. catch on to, like, 
we're holding on to our potassium. Like, we're not doing that program anymore. Yeah. Like, and like, wow. it was so crazy to like know that your body, like, you know, has this lingering effect of like, my body was used to depleting potassium. And yeah. I'm not even taking that drug anymore. But like, yeah, I was. At at a teenage yeah. year, you have to go through this. That it was, sucks. I'm so I mean, sorry. prom oh night. Oh my God. Prom night. Prom night, I got all ready and I started to throw up. And uh, it was the third time I had menstruated. So I'm like, I had menstruated again. Uh, prom night. Prom night. Prom night. <laughs> prom night. <laughs> Did you prom end up night. going to prom? No. No, no, no. no. Oh, I say it's You didn't miss much. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The, I mean, I proms are never that prime. great. I'm aware of that. Like, High school's not your glory days. No, like it's, it's four not. years. Yeah. It's you never think been of that. The people that still act like it's yeah, like glory and if it is your glory years, I'm sorry. Like, it's f- what happened to the you rest of your life? Good for you if it was. Maybe <sighs> yeah, that was maybe. your height. Highlight, yeah, yeah, and that's kind of sad. Hey, good for you. Everybody yeah. needs their own, but yeah, it wasn't Oof. for me. There's still, <laughs> yeah. there's still a lot of life out there after high school. Like right? I was saying when before we started the show, my forties have been like the best. Like I've had the best. Time me in my too. 40s. I really look forward to my birthdays, and I'm so excited about them. Like, very See, I'm the like, same way. I grew up not celebrating birthdays because I grew up Jehovah Witness, and I didn't have my first birthday present birthday till I was 21. So now, and my friends know this, yeah. I make such a big deal He's about birthdays. He's really big you on birthdays. You survived another Perfect. year. That is something to applaud. Exactly. Right? Like, Thank like, you. Yeah. Finally, something Yeah, I get understands. it. I get it. Like, it's you, And I really think after for me... And I know I brought it up before, but after cancer, it changed my mindset of like, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. You need to celebrate making it another year. I do it. So I um, love that you're big on birthdays. That's so big. Exciting. I, so yeah. So I'm, I take it to the next step. Like over. So the 13th. Um, I do like half birthdays, quarter birthdays. Like, oh, you, know, like I said, I need to you re- have a reason to shoot. Yeah, I, I need to recalibrate you. myself. Yeah. Like people, you know, New Year's Eve is their thing. I do that New Year's Eve, but really my birthday because that's when I came to, to the world. Yeah, yeah, and like, what am I doing here? What do I want to do? You know, like aging, death, and dying. Like yes. you get it. Like you had cancer. You get yes. it. Like why are you getting up? Like it's like the zest for life. Like. I could just sit here and like I don't know, do yeah, like it. Why, like you know, I've I've been there before. Yeah, like how does it change anything? Yeah, I can move my legs. I feel so grateful for moving my legs. There are people that are in wheelchairs, and that is just like it's offensive to me to like not have your gifts. Like you need to use your gifts and love your gifts. And like I don't think it's bad at all. Like just for anyone that may have misconstrued that to be in a wheelchair, but I'm just saying that to have legs. Yeah. And to not like get out and use them, explore and like be appreciative of it. Yeah, yeah. and just like there's some people who are not as fortunate. Yeah, so. and gratitude. And gratitude. Yeah. gratitude. Like we're we're powerful people, and it's yeah. just like and and you if you are that person that is you know hurt and that's upset about like if I possibly was angry at someone with a disability, maybe they need like you know a compliment and love, and like yeah. that's a huge thing. It's like your body doesn't understand and distinguish whether you gave a compliment or received it like the compliment that you just gave to that person if they accepted it and received it they just had like a flush of serotonin and oxytocin and dopamine and so did you i never thought of it that way (laughs) and that's like that's such a beautiful thing like to be around people and like turn people on and like if you can turn someone on like we are so powerful as people like we can turn people on and like say compliments and be kind or do the exact opposite and be awful and like why would you want to do that yeah yeah why would like why exactly yeah. why with your power why? like yeah. no and, and one of the things i've learned too is that people are waiting for someone to give them to to feel reassured and feel complimented I and think it's everybody and it's nice that. to grace somebody with yeah. that like it feels good for you to do that as well to give yeah. to somebody that yeah and, and to be aware yeah and, and be aware yeah you're yeah. absolutely right Someone asked me um, in a comment on, uh, I just got a TikTok just to like take over the AIDS baby 86. Like I'm not really into it. Yeah. But some person that was obviously in, in their younger teens, like put like, who asked you? Like, and it's just like, you know, like <laughs> to the thing. And it's just like, my response is like, are you okay with the heart? Like, are you okay? Like, obviously, like I'm not going to engage with you and be mean yeah. to you. Like, yeah. you know, like, 
obviously something's triggering yeah your like why are you trying to attack me like i'm sorry that you're hurting right now like are you okay like i'm not like trying to engage with you and yeah. You know, it's like a specialty to defuse things and de-escalate. And, like, you should want to. Like, why would you want to start wars? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why would you want to start wars, Russia? God <laughs> damn it. Yeah, why would you want to start wars? <laughs> no. Yeah. But, yeah. you guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to talk to Kaylee about dating. Yeah. <laughs> dating and some of the new studies that have come out about HIV, what you think about PrEP, um, just how life has been now as an adult. Yeah. And like your mindset. We're going to get all into all of that when we come back from break. We'll be right back, you guys. In the world of male sexual health, getting an erection isn't always the problem, but instead premature ejaculation may be the issue. The great news is, him says that covered with either a spray, a pill, or both. Formulated with lidocaine, the spray works by altering the sensitivity to the sprayed area without overly numbing. Unlike other topical products, it's absorbed by the skin without transferring to your partner. Spray to the most sensitive areas of your penis 5 to 10 minutes before game time. This spray absorbs quickly and stays local to the applied area, rather than numbing the sensation of your entire penis. Studies have shown men can last 64% longer when using the spray. HIMSS offers men access to high-quality medical products for issues all men face, but rarely take care of, and HIMSS is a trusted destination for sound medical guidance with both prescription and non-prescription solutions. Sex should be fun for all, HIMSS helps you enjoy this pleasure longer with a quick and easy spritz. Try HIMSS today. Go to whoinvitedher.net slash HIMS, that's HIMS. HIMSS is a one-stop shop for sexual wellness, hair loss and skin care for men. They can connect you to FDA-approved treatments backed by science. Prescription products are subject to medical provider approval and require an online consultation with a medical provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate, all from the comfort of your own home. See website for full details and safety information. That's who invited her.net slash HIMS. Hey, everybody. We are back from break, and we're ready to go. So before we went to break, we were talking about you having a meningitis. Did yes. I say that right? You said it right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad yeah, with good words. good job. Um, you had it a fourth time, Taylor. So I wait, did, when I was did. How old were you when it came? I can't believe in two years you had a four freaking time. Yeah. So the fourth time, uh, you were – the first time was 16, so you were 18. Yeah. How was the – you were already out of high school by uh, then. Hopefully. I was out of high school. Um, I was enrolled in my first semester of college, and in August, right before college, meningitis came back with vengeance for the fourth time, and I lived in that. I lived in UCSD hospital for a month and a half. <gasps> It was, was it was like all the right accommodations that I would want anyone to have. No, yeah. but this was right when you started college. I didn't. I, I wasn't. I was registered. Had oh, all my classes picked ready. out. I had it all. I had my starting I, life. Starting yeah, life. I was starting as a life. College kid. I was finally eighteen. Yeah. I was. You know, I saw you've that been waiting for. everything that I had been yeah. waiting for. Yeah. And I had meningitis for the fourth time. Like I was so excited for this moment in my life. And then just got rug so, swept under the. I have a question. How did you handle that mentally? Because I'm I can't imagine. Yeah, I would have been pissed. I would have been mad. I probably would have would have been like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I can't. I would be throwing how? things. I just I just find it amazing how positive <laughs> yeah. you have stayed, and yeah. you're like just. The way you even talk about the way you grew up and having this disease and HIV and how you've handled it and how you choose to go, this is the bad, but I'm going to focus on getting to this point. Yeah. And especially your teenage years, which is like already yeah. hard enough as it is. I mean, shout out to mental health. My yeah. My dad had great insurance and also being in California. So I was in weekly counseling like once a once a week yeah. since i was like sixth grade so like i oh, there you go. Okay. so having this like safe playing ground to just even talk about being 
living in these two worlds, like my secretive world while I was in the closet and like school. Like in these the were closet, my peers. Like like a lot of gay people do. Yeah. Up. yeah. No, yeah. like I yeah, yeah. compartmentalizing wow, that, that huge is... part of myself and yeah. like that's not myself. Like I completely relate. Like it's not the same thing, but it's the same. It's the yeah. same. Yeah. So going, so now you're 18, you, you're sick, you obviously get better from the meningitis. Now going into your 20s in adulthood, how have you handled dating and bringing up like, oh, I'm HIV positive? Because I, I know even now, luckily we're in California and it's a little more liberal and people are a little more, I hate saying it, but educated in a way. Yeah. But there's still a lot of people who think... HIV is a gay disease. So, yes. So how all... did you navigate being a hetero woman going into the dating world and having that conversation when you meet somebody and stuff? Well, I'm like a... I don't give a fuck type of person. Yeah. Like, yeah. I I fought for my life. Um, yeah. When I had meningitis for the fourth time and I was living at UCSD Hospital, I had my... My head shaved because they needed to put a, a shunt through my skull, and oh. it came out. It came out my abdomen. Oh. They wanted to wait, shave. wait, wait, wait. At oh. eighteen? Yeah, I had you're my in head. the hospital. They shave your head, and they're gonna be like, "We're gonna put this." In. Oh my god! They needed god. to drain this pressure from my head, and they couldn't constantly give me spinal taps. I had like over yeah. seventy-eight spinal taps. Like, yeah, even with not being in the hospital because your your body will continue to build up pressure just like with your body continuing to get rid of potassium like your body gets yeah. just like oh this is what we do like yeah. type mentality but um so you're in the hospital they I'm shave a, your head they shave my head and i have you know i'm living here for a month and a half yeah. and the doctors are talking above me and they're telling me that you know, I'm going to go to hospice, and I'm going <gasps> to die. Whoa. No, and, no, no, no. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, and, and I'm like, and I'm 18. This is my fourth time with meningitis. So this, like, is not my, this is not my first rodeo. Yeah. I've done this three times before. Yeah. So what, did, was, you, what did you think? How did you even my process reaction, that shit? I processed it. Yeah. And my process, and my, like, projection was openly expressive verbally. I told the doctors to go fuck themselves and to get out of my room. Wow. Because I did not appreciate I did not appreciate their energy that they were bringing to me like I was going to heal and I needed them to be on par with like, you know, where we're going, not where I'm going. And I didn't appreciate their 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 projection the energy of me. that they were putting yeah, out cuz you so say like, this yeah, is like, hospice you and you're you, and 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 honestly, that is like, amazing. and and I you feel said, fuck that shit. No way, Jose. Yeah, no, and I feel very strongly because when yeah. I was a little girl and I was at NIH doing the studies, I was blessed to run around the Smithsonian, and I even more blessed to see the AIDS quilt, which is oh wow, so powerful. And I remember, so you were a kid when you saw it. Eight years old when I saw it. Eight how, years old. Like I can't imagine how that must have felt being an eight year old, knowing you have this disease and what your life is gonna look like going forward at that time. My that mom was crying. Amazing. Like I I honestly had a sense of solace. Like, you know, like seeing how many people love these people. These people are your love. These people are loved and yeah. they are loved. They still are loved. And you know, it goes and it coincides with like survivor's guilt and people that have survivor's guilt and mm. I don't have that and like i understand that but these are people that un that are that are angels and though we can't see them they're still here so like with yeah. me i'm like i gotta fight for my angels like you know like my, i got angels by my side like it was like a sense of solace like my mom was really sad but with me i was just like i gotta live my best life like these people would have wanted me to live my best mm -hmm. life like i have like yeah. we're tied together like almost like a responsibility yeah for totally. the life that they weren't able to do it for feels sure. like you were like no i'm gonna do it for you yeah and you have done yeah. it i mean yeah. look at you now <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they have so many people that they love that are still here yeah. you know that are feeling those feelings and it's like no these these people don't want you to feel that they want you to feel love they want you to be loved they want you to remember them and know that they love you yeah. like they don't want you to feel down and in the dumps and not doing your your thing yeah. they want you yeah. to they want you to 
thrive. Do it. Yeah, they want you to thrive. Like they want you to do. You, they want you to do your best because they love you and they have their your back. And even though you can't see them or touch them, mm-hmm. like they want you to think about them and like unlock that feeling of yeah. like love because they're still with you. Like they still have their your back. Wow. Yeah. So wait, how has dating life been? How do you navigate that? now or even when you were in your early yeah, 20s tw- i have 20s. like I, my brain is going all over the place <laughs> with questions no, okay no, first it's... off i want to know which we didn't cover how do you uh, choose when you t- told people you were hiv positive whether it's friends somebody you're dating that conversation especially <laughs> yeah like let's say at 18 when you're making those relationships <laughs> and you're in your early 20s so i didn't tell you know maybe a handful of people yeah when I was a child from six to 18 before I had meningitis, like it was very closed up mm-hmm. off. But when I had meningitis for the fourth time and I had my sh- head shaved, it was like the classic Joseph Campbell rebirthing moment. Like, yeah. you know, I, I lost 88 pounds. Holy in, shit. Wow. And you I, were I, really I didn't tiny. Lost, I, didn't, I didn't lose 88 pounds. I got down to 88 pounds. Okay. So oh. like a third And you're of tiny. My, yeah. She's yeah. tiny. She's yeah. very, she, I'm, I'm six three. She probably comes up to my nipple. <laughs> but it was like a third of my body weight. So I had this like, you know, classic rebirthing moment. And, you know, my childhood, I lived in these two worlds where it was separate. And, yeah. you know, I was 18. This is what I was like waiting for is to not be in this structure anymore. So yeah. this was like such a symbolic moment in my life where, you know, I was rebirthed because I I had this soul death. You know, I got down like a third of my body weight, my head shaved, and like there was no stopping me. So to be this wallflower, you know, where I was like, you know, scared about telling people my status, it wasn't, I didn't have it. Like I wanted people to know my status. Of course, it's not necessarily the first thing that I'm going to say. But, like, in dating, like... So that was kind of the prevalent moment where you said, you know what? I don't give a fuck if people know. Yeah. It's, this is who I am. This is and, who I am. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. It was like you had to go through something really hard at 18. Yeah. Getting meningitis a fourth time, shaving your head, going through all that. And that's when it changed for you. As oh my far gosh. as how you approach telling people your status and owning it in a way. Absolutely. So yeah, the, the biggest, the, such a, a memory that I have, um, I was in the hospital for a month and a half with meningitis yeah. and then uh, probably another eight weeks of having the home infusions and my weight went down to 88 pounds and I had a he- shaved head. So I would be done with my infusion and i would want to go out in the world yeah you know like i'm not tied to a bed anymore like and that's i want to i want to be out in the world like the world doesn't continue to go just because you're stopped in a bed and i'm very aware of that and i you know i'm so you know i want to take care of myself i want to be out in the world like it's important to me but i would go out and people would look at me i had this shaved head I'm 88 pounds. I'm a bucket. I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred pounds. I'm almost five, six. I'm <laughs> yes, almost five, six. Almost. So I'm like, <laughs> I look like someone just you transported me from Auschwitz and put oh, me gosh. into the world. Sure. Yeah. So people, so which triggered, so people probably didn't know how to react. To you. <laughs> people didn't know how to react, which is understandable, but people yeah. would look at me and they would have these fucking faces of disgust, shock, weirdness, and to me, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, you know, yeah, like, why are you yeah. looking at me like that? Like, I'm very aware of what I look like. And I'm trying. Like, yeah. I'm trying. Like, it's my health. Like, I'm trying on my health. Yeah. And I know for a fact that you wouldn't want someone to look at you like this or someone that you love to look like this. Yeah. yeah. And I had such a blessing to go through my childhood, my adolescence, not looking like this. To, ha- yeah. like, circumnavigate, like, this level of just, like... W- weird looks and like, like strangeness. A, a sick. Yeah. Sick. You yeah. didn't look sick until 18 when your head was shaved and you were 84 yeah. pounds. Yeah. And like it like, you know, circles back to like, you know, let's be kind to people. You know, be like this could be you. Like, isn't it a blessing that you aren't me? Like, why are you looking to me like this? Yeah. I know. Like, that is a good point, Haley. It's like how about give me a some, smile? Yeah. Yeah. 
you should be thankful you're not in that person's and show them kindness instead yeah. of judgment. Yeah. It's the same wow. thing with like homeless people. Like people yeah. have a contempt for homeless people. Like, why don't you feel gra- right, grateful that that's not you? Like that makes yeah. you angry. That like, is true. And we know in San like, Diego, our homeless yeah, gotten. Yeah. yeah. Because we have the perfect weather. Where, why else would they go be homeless somewhere else? Yeah. You can be here. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> it, it definitely doesn't. Yeah. San Diego is the best weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, how about let's counter blessings? Let's, you know, yeah. let's be thankful. Like, why is this provoking anger in you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or like obsessed how is, or disgust. How or, like, is dating life night now for you? How is it approaching that topic with a guy when you're dating? Dating is. You know, it's been an evolution. Yeah. Um, it's always a when you care about someone, there is a level of care on their reaction. Yeah. When you when yeah. you care about them, like you know, I I really don't care about people's reaction, but if I care about you, like is this like yeah. your your heart tenses up? It's like please oh. like accept me and be kind because I like you. Like you know like yeah, it's like we you were, know we were talking about that on break. Yeah. Eric had brought up yeah. So I've gone through moments where I've been you know going on a date with somebody and they're explaining to me that they're HIV positive and and seeing how scared they are to tell me breaks my heart because yeah. I know that that means that there's been a situation that hasn't gone well for them and that that kills me and I hate that. Yeah. But even like with their like, and, and you might also be like a, the third or fourth person that they've told because like, That's it's true. so like, yeah. it's so hard to say that and admit it. And then also like the judge, like if you've been judged before, cause yeah, like if you had someone be yeah. negative towards you and you're just like, it's anticipation. Yeah. It sticks. Yeah. Like, and it's hurtful. And, and it's even like, with all the advancements with it in the HIV community and like medicine and all of that and how, why, how much more exposure there is people to it, seeing it on television and all that and people talking about it, there's still stigma, there's still stigma. attached to the disease that you're a dirty person. And you know what drives me crazy on the on the apps, like the gay apps, when they clean. say no, clean. 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 Yeah. Like, that drives oh. me crazy. It, it's, yes, it's I agree. Like, I, it I'm, does. I Don't s- put that in your no. profile. I'm clean. Yeah. Are you clean? I yeah, a, I took a shower this morning. <laughs> I, have, I have a picture about that. Like, I try I to, like, I have a, few, I have a yeah. few, like, concepts that I'm, like, trying to, like, portray for that. But, yeah, it drives me insane. And it's so dehumanizing yep. to even put that on a person and negative yeah. and people aren't thriving and you're putting someone in a position of self-harm and, and how like, why you, would you do that and how you brought it up on break the disease hiv it doesn't matter who you are you're it's like you said the first word in hiv is human yep doesn't matter who you're sleeping with your race what your creed is you're human. We're, it's all the same. It's all the same. Like, how, how weird are you going to do? You're going to fucking judge people on blood type? Like, are you a B positive? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> we, don't, like, we don't do that. Yeah. No. Yeah. So like, why you are you going to? Yeah. Like, it's blood. Like, we all cry in the same language. Like, stop it. <gasps> I love that. We I've never all heard that. cry in the, in same, the same language. language. Well, you know, we're from San Diego, so like blessings. This yeah. is a sanctuary, beautiful city. It is. And yeah. I yeah. love to have we're been We're very like, lucky to grow up yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> and to have amazing friends that are immigrants and to, you know, know that they're translators for their family yeah. that be first generation or like immigrated there themselves. Like, yeah. you know, you might know the di- not know the dialect. This might be red to me, but you might see hot pink. But we're talking about the sign, sign. and why yeah. are we going to argue about the color of it? Yeah, like, it's still a sign. It's still Take a sign. away the color, it's yeah. still a sign. Yeah, like I and like that. language is a way to communicate and to to bring people together, and it's beautiful. And people are people, and they just want to they just want to thrive and love. Yeah, like, it's just like yeah. see you've yourself done, and other people. You've done a lot of work with your with your story. I mean. Pause Magazine. Let's talk about Pause Magazine. So Pause yeah. Magazine has been around since the mid nineties. Yeah, ninety four. Ninety four, yeah. and it's a HIV positive magazine, but they give a lot of education, and that's been a. They have a website, and I remember, like, I remember being very young, very gay, and worried about HIV in the nineties. And Pause the website and the magazine. I remember this very distinctly. There was a forum on the website. And it was experts in the forum. And you can ask questions and they would answer it. And they always were about 
how do you get HRV? How do you get, and all that? So you, for this magazine, pause. It's a nationwide magazine. You're the back, the back page girl. I'm the back page girl. <laughs> the March community, like yeah, highlight the March, person. Yeah, yep, that's that's me. pretty big because yeah. it's a big magazine. I know. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, I they follow me on yeah. Instagram and they reached out and of course I like die because mm-hmm. same like. I knew that I wasn't in a child clinic when there wasn't highlight magazines. They yeah. were pause magazines. And usually there was only like adult clinics like in yeah. the HIV world. So like sure. reading yeah. these publications, like lipodystrophy, like scare the shit out of me. Like lipodystrophy is like the this like your fat gets distributed to like different parts of your body with like some drug interactions. Yeah. People yeah. are becoming hunchback. Yeah. And like I even remember being like Scared of that? No, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I did not want to be in a position where my sickness showed. I didn't want to be in that. Like I tried. I I wanted to show. Like I wanted to. I wanted to hide that completely. Like these two different worlds, especially with how stigmatizing it was. Like it's. I didn't want. I did not like that's like I. I didn't want to see the people shine through. Like I just wanted to get out of this area and like of my life uh, that was so temporary. That's like yeah. the 18. I really feel like that moment of like having meningitis. I was just like, yeah, I'm leaving this behind. Like leaving I have all it. this like, uh, like energy. Yeah. Like, uh, and the head shade was just so beautiful. Like, yeah. I love it. Like, let's get this behind so us. For, pa- for the back, back page girl of pods. Um, you get to tell your story on there. So it's a great art. It's the March epi- episode, right? Yeah. yeah. It's very, very cool. The other thing I was going to ask you is, since you were born with this disease, how have you seen the medication from taking oh, yeah. 12 pills a day, three times a day, till now? We're in 2022. You've seen the whole game. <laughs> I, I assume um, you're probably on one pill a day now, right? Is that so, yeah, that's where we're so at? So explain it. So, like how so two your, pills, your, your journey has been with the two medication. Pills, okay. Two pills keeps my AIDS at bay. That's I nice. really wish they were the same pharmaceutical company because I really think that's like a marketing, like, you know, slogan. Yeah, two pills keeps my hands away. Yeah, like yeah, two that's, a day. That's a whole commercial. And your, right yeah. your status would be undetectable? Yeah. So, so explain that for people because there's still people who yeah. are not educated on it or have questions. Undetectable. What does that mean in the HIV world? And what does that mean if you're, let's say, somebody who is negative and you want to date, have sex with somebody who is undetectable? Absolutely. So undetectable. My whole evolution of like, yeah, I know about HIV drugs. They were awful and in the beginning and now yeah, I'm you all talked too, about it, how sick you got. Yeah. 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 So like now we're at two pills a day. Like during my meningitis years, like I have an amazing amazing relationship with my doctor and I was like, let's, you know, get my body, you know, healthy. I don't want to add also HIV medication is a chemotherapeutic medication. Yeah. So it is a very hard medication. It's it's tough. Like I don't I don't want to, you know, make people think it's like all gravy and it's like nothing. Like, yeah, you it is a, it's a chemotherapy like we it's medication. Like your body and your kidneys are, you know, metabolizing it and there's things like, yeah, like it is wonderful that two pills a day keeps my AIDS at bay mm-hmm. and I got on this regimen and I became undetectable s- like within 30 days. Oh, wow. Which, okay. like, you know, that that's a, with no side effects. And that's no the whole thing. Effect. There used to be side effects. And that's with the, whole the thing. medication earlier when you were earlier. younger, yeah, taking like, 12 pills a day. Now yeah. the two pills, you don't get the side effects. That yeah. You used to. Even within 10 years ago, there was really bad yeah, side effects. Okay. Awful, yeah. awful side effects. And so now, like and it's so amazing. Yeah. So like U equals U, like and becoming undetectable in like thirty days from taking my regimen. I didn't know that that yeah. it was that quickly after it was it was like thirty so, days. Like I had a f- huge quick response yeah. is that's I feel empowered because in the dating world mm-hmm. I say that, you know, I got on HIV medication to give myself a competitive edge in the dating world interesting <laughs> because like i'm taking my i'm taking my yeah. hiv off the table like yeah. i understand like i i understand so by being I, undetectable by being yeah. undetectable yeah. because my my people that i'm dating that i'm with they can't con- they can't i can't give my hiv to them yeah like undetectable means untransmittable yeah, exactly. hashtag bruce 
<laughs> my my baby my baby Bruce like oh. made that s- slogan, but yeah, yeah. um yeah the undetectable and like, that's such a powerful thing like to be able to give someone the power to know that their HIV is not a a roadblock it's not baggage it's not a tether to them being in a thriving relationship it's huge yeah, yeah. like you know and, and you know to you know go into prep which i know you want to talk about prep like yeah because like, i know i started prep after. yeah like knowing that i'm undetectable like i'm unfortunately you know i'm not trying to you know talk about my sexuality but we can yeah. talk about it but i'm a straight white woman mm-hmm. and i'm undetectable so like knowing that i'm undetectable and i'm monogamous my partner that i'm with i'm okay and i I don't, I, well, not okay. I don't want them to be on prep. Yeah. Because I'm taking the drugs for them. Like, I, right. with the oh, chemotherapeutic medication. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Like, because you're undetectable. Yeah. yeah. You can't transmit it yeah. to your partner. So why, why put doing? them on prep yeah, if I don't you're already them. taken care of? Yeah. It would be like oh, the same of is, like, okay. it's. To me, like I see this, my, my simile would be or analogy. And that is because you are in a monogamous relationship. It's not with a stranger that says, yeah. hey, I'm undetectable, but you don't know. You, you actually, this is a choice that you made in the relationship. Yeah. And I think I never thought of it that way. Yeah. To be honest. No, like, no, and it's totally, oh, it's totally you're, you're absolutely doing the work fine. for your partner. And that's why we yeah. talk is to like provoke thoughts and yeah. like share. We're all storytellers. We all come from different backgrounds and it's important like to unlock like people's thoughts or inspire someone to speak and share is it's everything. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the whole the point. The conversation, start yeah. the conversation. Yeah, it's the whole point. Like it's the whole Wait, how long point. have you and your partner been together? Um, So I started so I started dating this guy. So, um, the end of January, January twenty. Oh, it's in tw- this year. Yeah, it's, Ooh, a, it's, new. A, it's new. Oh, it's new. Yeah. It's new. It's yeah. new. I know. I met them in San Clemente. At a San bar. Clemente. <laughs> I was doing stand up. So my friend Aiden Park. Wait, you were doing stand up? Yeah. So Wait, I didn't know that. <laughs> you do stand up. I do stand up. I know. I know. I used to only think I was a writer, and then I got on social yeah. media. Because then... you're working on a book too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Your I have story. There's so much. I, I know. know. I'm just like I'm just bursting with creativity. <laughs> You did stand. How did stand up go? I would be. So it went scared. wonderful. Yeah, it went really, really great. And I also bagged this very sweet man, Aww. and they're a pilot, and they let me fly their plane. He's so a I, pilot. That is wow. so hot. Yeah, I got I got to fly the plane. <laughs> you from did? Pa- yeah, from Palomar to Big Bear, thirty minutes. Nice. That's so <laughs> awesome. I've never flown a plane. God damn. Yeah. So cool. So cool. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say that I flew it. Like, I mean, he was flying it. And then, like, I, like, Still, it was. Still, no, just I say you terrified. flew it. Just yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys get it. You yeah. get she it. She flew yeah, the plane. I flew, I flew the plane. Like, I know. I know. Yeah. Exactly. You understand it. That's more flying than I've done. So. <laughs> I know. So you flew. I flew. Yeah. She's I flew. flown on other things, Eric. Yeah. No, you've flown on other things, Eric. <laughs> but it's all, yeah, it's all great. And exciting yeah. and it's fun and the one on one, but then when you introduce these like aspects of like another person that like, you're yeah. dating, we have their family, their friends that like put in their Shit, two cents within yeah. their relationship. So it's like everybody has to chime in. Everyone's got to yeah. chime in, and I and I'm for and I love that the fact that this that someone that I'm dating is loved yeah. and supported. Yeah. That's a but beautiful like, way to yeah, look it's, at it. Yeah, it's beautiful. That really is. Yeah. It's like, I, I love that. But and like that to, people care enough to be worried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like the you equals you is wonderful. So it's like yeah. also to have like a partner that's able to communicate like back up. Like I'm secure. Like to be able to communicate these things like is, you know, a, a huge aspect for me. Like in my personal relationship because yeah. I can't I can't have my light be dimmed and I have had – my light dim before in the past because of the fact that people are not necessarily cl- open yeah. open with m- themselves and in their world and I'm positive and I get that and I'm not trying to necessarily blow up someone's world so yeah. it's either like you fit in place or you fall out yeah like and I'm not trying to make something fit and that's okay that someone's not there 
Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely sure. okay. It's yeah. absolutely okay. How do you how do you feel about prep now that it's like very readily available? Yeah. Um, and all of that because it had I mean, within the I did I didn't do prep for a long time because I was in a relationship, but then once I got single, I decided to go on prep just as a safety person because you never know. Somebody could tell you something, completely be yeah. lying to your face. So do you think how has your viewpoint been on prep since it's been so out? I so I I feel I'm not fully sure, but like I feel like a little bit like controversial in the oh, really? in the okay. application of my thoughts on prep because adherency with HIV drugs is very important. You need to take your HIV drugs so your mm. HIV status is undetectable. And there's a whole human error in like people not taking drugs properly and for prep, like we're we're talking about true bada and that's like the holy grail. And to possibly give HIV a virus an upper hand in biology by slowly introducing, you know, some medication and like making it smart because it's it's in the nineties we had an overprescription of antibiotics. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we overprescribe antibiotics and we have super bugs and anti resistant antibiotics. And I see and I get terrified. Oh, that that might happen with HIV. With HIV, because it is, because with adherency, like yeah. you, you need it. It's, it's not, it's, it's not a conspiracy. It's very aware you need to take your HIV medication. Yeah. And because, and if you don't, like, you know, there are some few medications that you can go on, but, you know, the development of, medications is huge and i was in yeah. the development of medications, of medications with were. like children so it's like please don't yeah please 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 don't mess with the sensitivity of the drugs like and i know that there's like money to be made in the whole thing well, and yeah, i absolutely yeah. think that like people and sex work i sex workers work and i think that people in sex work industry should have access to prep 100 percent for yes. free, give it to them, give like to them. absolutely. There, it's like, like any other job. A any other job, it is work. Job. Yeah, Seriously. like absolutely. Like, and I feel very strongly about that. Yeah, about, yeah. But, like, but even with like, it's interesting that you brought that up about um, it being like HIV because with prep, there was an article that came out that I was reading that it said there that the prep is very good because it does prevent the spread of HIV if you take it like you're supposed, supposed to. to. Yes. But that's so, with everything. Everything. Any medication. It's so, the same thing. But they were saying that even if you don't, let's say you don't take any, you get HIV, because you have PrEP in your system or you've been taking it, they have you stop taking PrEP right away because it can help the, the HIV. HIV learn it yes and then, learn it and then, yes. sorry oh. and then it becomes and then so that's why it's I think it's important if you are on prep you need to stick to taking it every day yeah. so pause yeah. magazine yeah. first reported on a Canadian man March 2016 who is became HIV positive while taking prep and then there's yeah. another Australian man I think in 2020 that they also reported on and then the Body magazine, which is also another publication. Oh, um, The Body. Yeah, they've been around a long yeah, time. Yeah, I got the interviewed by them. Yeah. Like, yeah, Charles interviewed me. I oh, Charles. Wow. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, body. the Body's yeah, like yeah. one so of the good. old. It's the same with Pods. It's one of the really early publications and websites that provided HIV education, not just for potentially in transmission of it, but for people with living with HIV. Yeah, like yeah. being a lot of information. Showcase and on them, like it's like yeah. fangirl. Like to have them like recognize me. I'm like, oh my really God. Big. Those are really like, big. I know. Wow. It's just like, yeah, like next like yeah, like yeah. I'm like, oh my God. <sighs> yeah. Like <laughs> But yeah, no, I think prep, if it's taken correctly, and I remember reading these studies when they did there was one that was done in London not too long ago. And they said that the people that did become positive while on prep was because they weren't adhering to taking it properly as they were pro supposed to, which is dangerous because yeah. like you're you are causing genetic mutations within a virus. Yeah, oh, dangerous. Think about and that. And as what we just learned through COVID, it's like that can. Yeah. And, oh, and I know. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. It's the genetic mutation. You are introducing something that is so important. Like I was in it. Like I had some crazy times yeah. being a participant at NIH, but to 
mess with like the evolution of drugs like ah, like yeah. ugh. and then like also like it, i think it also like and you know people have a spectrum of beliefs on condoms but like i think condoms are great like people don't want people to breathe their own their oxygen and they're like oh i have a joke on it because i do stand up <laughs> but like people are like it's just like oh i need a mask up but it's just like you will meet someone on tinder and have them you will come in them and not give a you know have any but you barriers, don't want to breathe <laughs> but you don't want to breathe their oxygen yeah. but you do not want to breathe their oxygen That's okay so That's okay so true. Okay. Yeah. Like, you want to know someone's COVID test, but you have no idea about their STI test, and you will not use a condom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, the, and, like, we yeah. barely touched on, like, yeah. you know, standard of care and with, like, um, insurance with, like, different countries and different yeah, states yeah, yeah. and different counties. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I agree with you. I See, this is my thing with condoms. I just don't want to get poop on my dick. Totally. I'm going to get football for sure. But, but that's like another thing. It's just like we don't like. So we're in San Diego, so yeah. I'm at UCSD. So like I find it a very liberal, amazing bubble. I don't I yeah. like. I can't talk about other people's homes. But we're like, very lucky here. We yeah, are like yeah. A- anal pops are huge. Like even yeah. within the straight community, like balls touch like your anus. Like to just to be aware of it, and like you get a pap smear. Like. People don't talk about that, and that standard of care is not everywhere. No, yeah. and like we like people have in their mind, and like oh, I'm on prep, I don't need to use a condom. They don't even. There's know that other STIs use... out there, yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, and some of them are not as easily curable sure. as they used to be. Yeah, yeah, with, with antibiotics anymore. Oh, it's so, so true. It's, yeah. yeah, well, it's... that's the whole thing. Going back to getting tested, regular, getting regularly tested, regularly tested. so you tested. know and, and your you status. Know your status, and possibly do some something about that it is, like yes. it's like whether it's taking antibiotics or getting on hiv medication so you don't yeah. spread the spread it to anybody you know what i mean yeah. it's taking responsibility for yourself and how you interact with other people get yeah. tested regularly it's oh, not that hard and especially was- if you're in san diego there's many places to get tested yeah <laughs> absolutely like yeah. empower yourself with the internet and so oh, we're in, yeah so we're in california so california is uh California State Bill 239, which was passed January 2018, it's a disclosure law. You don't have to disclose your status to your partner. So it's – you can't – like this, like, blame game of, like, people. Like, you know, like, it's not someone else's fault. Like, unless you go to the clinic and get tested with someone and then wait an X amount of time, like, Mm -hmm. like, you can't – yeah. Put that on someone, you know, like absolutely. And I, and I, you got to watch know. out for yourself. You know, yeah. you got to take care of yourself and take responsibility for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So if you're taking care of yourself by getting tested regularly and taking your medication the way you should be, then you have no reason to blame anybody and, else. Yeah. For and it, <laughs> whatever you get. And right? we've come a long ways. I've actually tried yeah. NERCs before, which is the online, just because I wanted to see what it would be like if, you know, somebody who lives in a, in a state that doesn't, doesn't have, have access like to that. Did, yeah. And you can do your full STI testing, send it all away, and then we'll mail you back your, just, your prep medication. Just like you, Kaylee, you did a yeah. video on your Insta about the home HIV test yeah. and yeah. how easy it was to do. And you find out, like, was it right away? I can't remember. So in America, um, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, and that's 20 minutes. That's quick. Um, Fisher is in South Africa, yeah. the European countries, uh Ghana and Brazil. Um, can- Canada has the Insta yeah. test. Uh, and these are all done through the mail. You get yeah. the kit. You don't even have to worry about going. The, yeah. Yeah. Like the doc- yeah. Yeah. You, and then, like, if you you can reach out to, you know, clinics and organizations through Instagram or online, mm-hmm. and some of them will send them to you. Or if you don't even want to do that, you can buy them, like, yeah. online, the Amazon, Walgreens, like, just yeah, just know we, your there's, status. We, there's no like way minutes. not in to minutes know your you'll status. Know. Yeah, in minutes <laughs> you can know. Like <laughs> minutes. We've come <laughs> such a long way oh compared God, yeah. to even when I was like first starting dating and like it's so Me too. it's so I'm so grateful that we have so many yeah. options and there's it's it's so much easier for everyone than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. So Kaylee, yeah. if if for a what advice would you give any let's say children, kids, uh, teenagers 
who are going through what you did as a as a kid, maybe living with HIV as a young person, what advice would you give them having gone through that? Well, I mean, I think all kids, you know, life yeah. is just a fucking mind fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, whether you have AIDS, cancer, you're gay, like your your parents suck, like you have no parent, like yeah. all of it, like a spectrum, like everyone feels. We all feel and we're all trying to get through it and yeah. like try to be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Try to surround yourself with people that yeah. love you, that are kind to you, that hype you up. And when you can't be around them, remember their voice and what they want for you and animate that in your head so you can be what they want because that's what you should be. Yeah. And, like, know that and feel solace in that. And, yeah, just know that, like, you are loved. Like You are loved. You are loved. Yeah. How about for people who may have just gotten diagnosed with HIV and that are scared? People that are scared, it's understandable to be scared mm -hmm. and try to breathe through it and be okay with being scared. And if you are overwhelmingly scared, take a nap because like, <laughs> yeah, a nap you know, nap. like, you know, that's like <laughs> an easy way to control yourself. And like, it's, you can go down a rabbit hole and get overwhelmed and like, don't self harm. Don't self harm. If you go down a rabbit hole, take a yeah. nap. Like, it's okay and seek out those people that build you up and you know reach out and get in care and resources if you need mental health resources like yeah. seek those out like you are deserving of that and you should have that and there's no one to blame and you're not to blame like things happen we don't like look at people that got get diabetes yeah. and have their toes cut off and go like, Oh, well you should have fucking kept that donut out of your mouth. Like, that is and you so should be, you be in that, you wouldn't be in that position. Yeah. Like, you know, be kind to yourself, yeah. like uh, uh, be your own best friend. And also to your perfect example of you're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. She's perfectly fine. Let me think in life. You're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be, be okay. You're going to be fine. You yeah. can live a great yeah. life. Yeah. And you deserve it. Yeah. You exactly. It. Yeah. You deserve it. <laughs> But oh my god, it's been amazing having you on the show. Thank you. It really me. has. Yeah. I I'm love you. I'm her. I'm her. I was invited. <laughs> how do how do people find you? Where do they get all of your stuff? Your Insta, all of that. Give it to the people. So I am only on Instagram at AIDSBaby86. Please there follow me, share me, and yeah. And Thank if you, you so guys get me. a hold of the Pause Magazine, the March edition, yes. you will see Haley on the back page. Give me your story. <laughs> Thank you. How do we find you, Eric? You can find me on Instagram at Daddy Bear Eric. Yes. Yeah. And you can follow the podcast. We are Who Invited Her underscore podcast on Instagram. We're Who Invited Her SD on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. You can follow me as Tony underscore baloney underscore macaroni. You guys, email us, the gang at whoinvitedher.net. We love hearing from everybody um don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on youtube don't forget you can watch us every tuesday night on out of tv at 7 30 am i forgetting anything else <laughs> i think i covered it leave all. leave a message we leave it, it fixed oh the <laughs> voicemail there was a reason yeah. why we didn't get messages it wasn't set up right like <laughs> but you can give us a call and leave a message 619-822-2369 and jimmy Sherfy, i did get your message it was yeah. hilarious we'll i gotta play. pull it and play it yeah. he was yeah it was funny jimmy of course jimmy Sheffrey, one of our past guests but thank you so much yeah Kimberly, for joining this us it's great. been amazing thank you thank you for sharing your story thank you. and you guys we will see you all next week bye